The 1970s Chevy Chevelle Street Burner coming up next. Hello once again model car fans, are you ready for a brand new video as we take a look at this great 1970 Chevy Chevelle 3-in-1 street burner from Ravel, our good old buddies at Ravel. This is another amazing kit from the GM showroom and I'm sure you're going to love it. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go down and open the lid on this amazing model kit. It gets mean when the light goes green. Our 1970 Chevelle SS 3-in-1 model kit by Ravel. This is a age 10 kit, skill level 2, 124th scale, and really cool. I've built this in the past, and in this kit you do get three different building options. So let's just turn our box up here for a moment, and zoom in on the actual side here. It's eight and a half inches long when built. You get 105 parts molded in white. And the decals are water slide. You also get chrome, of course. This heavy Chevy can be assembled as your choice. A stock Chevelle, street machine, or dragster. Detailed 454 Chevy V8 engine. Optional wheels, hoods, side pipes, and roll bar. Decals for stock, custom, and race version. Molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and soft black tires. They also give you the paint callout colors that you need in order to finish this model. Now zooming back out, we do have some nice reference photos of our model kit. Licensed by GM, manufactured in 2011. So this is quite a while ago. This kit is also on loan from James, who's letting us see what's in the box. So there you go. Nice white stripes on here. And I've built this model in the past. Goes together really nicely as most Ravel and monogram type kits go. So let's just pull the lid off this thing. If you can. <laughs> it's in one of these Ravel toll boxes. So here we go. Now, this is all still in the plastic wrap, so James has given me permission to open this up and review it. But all our white plastic parts are in this bag, as you can see. We move now into the clear part in the bag, which is always nice because this prevents glass from getting scratched from other components. We do have some rubber tires. Now, there's these drag slicks here, and I notice there's these other wheels. I'm not sure if if uh, Ravel put them in the kit, or these are ones from James, because they've got that rubber dust on them, you know, whereas these ones don't. Maybe they are. I'm not too sure. We'll find out in the instructions anyway. And here's our choice of all our chrome wheels and drag components and whatnot, as well as the stock components right in here. Then what do we got here? Our big instruction sheet, and inside are the decals and that's it so what i'll do now is clear away the box and all the debris and we'll open this up and take a look at our 1970 chevelle to begin our review we have this nice fold out instruction sheet which of course is quite large you can see our 70 chevelle built up model kit here as well as the blueprinted dragster version so Let's just zoom back a bit here so we can see these instructions in full panel detail. So to open them up, we get, of course, all our paint callouts and the parts with the parts name. And quite a lot, as you can see. So let's zoom back in again here. Now here we have our stock engine with, of course, the right and left hand engine block with the transmission molded in place. Our cylinder heads, valve covers, exhaust manifolds, intake manifold, carburetor, air cleaner, the front water pump cover, alternator, uh, <laughs> belts and pulleys, and our fan with the clutch on there. And if we just slide our instructions down here, you can see the dragster version, which of course has all those pre-mentioned parts. But I do believe you get different valve covers. Not too sure. You get this nice blower on here, 
with the dual carbs and the blower scoop. Then you get the extended belts and pulleys here to go up to the blower as well as your regular fan and alternator. So this is sort of a street and race version. This is a op optional component so you could actually get rid of this. It's not uh, alternator pulley belts and then blower belts on top. My mistake. Sorry. Okay. Coming across the panel two here. Shows our wheels going together with of course the, the options. So there's your GM stock wheel going in here and down below we have our race mag wheels going in and then this all drops onto our little frame there. Then we have a couple of these little supports back here and then our rear axle going in. For the dragster version we have oh different wheels for stock and street. Oh this is going onto the back axle as well as our big drag slicks going in here. There's the wheel tire retaining clip and wheel back. So make sure you don't paint this so that it goes in there <laughs> and is able to spin around freely. Down here in panel 5 we have our windows. It says no paint window trim, door handles, emblems, and body trim silver. Carefully remove part 65 for use in step 9. So that's getting your little headlights out of here. Next up we have our interiors, the stock version, and our street and race. So they're basically the same except for you get the fire extinguisher, then the roll bar, and this little box up here. Uh, however, front bucket seats, the interior is a tub variety. There's your dashboard, your steering column, your steering wheel, and your gear shift lever, and they all go together like so. Panel 7 shows our interior being dropped into the body, and then we've got our brake master cylinder and I do believe heater motor going in on our firewall. Panel 8 shows our stock body being dropped onto the chassis, and then our radiator and fan shroud gluing all together in here at the front, as well as our radiator hose for our engine. And the same is being done here on the dragster version, except for there's no hose. Panel 9 shows our headlights, the chrome bezels going in, as well as our clear glass components. And then those go into the front of the car, via the front of the car, as well as our bumper and our license plate. Panel 10 is showing our bumper, rear bumper, going into the back of the body. You will have to paint the taillights with some red. There's this little brace that goes across underneath, and of course our license plate. Now if you've decided to use the street and race version, there's these side pipes that go on, and this is showing their location into the exhaust manifolds. Panel 12 shows us our hood going on to the car, as well as the side mirror here. For the street version, you have the custom hood with the cutout for the blower, which is kind of nice that you don't actually have to cut the stock hood. And then of course our side mirror going on. And then for the race version, we have two side mirrors. You could also use this for the street version. These are sort of more 70s, 80s style, later. And then of course we have our hood here with the hood pins and the hole cutout. Our final panel shows us the stock decal location. And it's pretty simplistic. It's just the SS454 license plate going on, as well as our striping package. And as you can see, it's a nice illustration here. And if we just push this up, you can see our decal location for our street and race version of the same kit. You get this interesting decal that goes on across the top, just like the box art. And you can also add in the heavy Chevy and all the sponsor decals. That's more for your drag racer, and this is more for your street. And that concludes our look at our Ravel 70 Chevelle instruction sheets. And now let's move these out of the way and take a look at our actual plastic components. Here we have our body for our 1970 Chevelle. And as you can see, there's a lot of features in here. This is very typical of this sort of Ravel monogram style kit. And as you can see, you've got your inner fender aprons with everything molded in place. The windshield wiper bottle as well as our AC Delco battery. 
Then here we have the little vents molded in place underneath the hood. And you can see it's it's very nice. <laughs> very nice. All right, so there's our body from the side profile. And again, we've got our SS emblems on here, as well as our side micro lights and the Chevelle style for 70. Up front, we have those headlight uh, bezels molded right onto our front fenders. There we go, you can see that nicely. Firewall at the back, very simplistic firewall. So as you can see, the master cylinder would go there and the heater motor would be over here. Turning this around to the back, we do have the Chevelle nameplate on here, as well as a little hole for our key latch to go in to unlock that trunk. There is quite a bit of flash on this, on the high points, but overall it is a nice smooth appearance for our body. So what I'll do to save a little bit of time here is to show the parts trees two at a time. What we have here is our brake master cylinder with the big enormous brake booster going on there. Here's our rear axle with the exhaust pipes molded in. This is sort of nice because you can paint all this without um, like some of the promo bodies where you have to figure out a way to paint your exhaust manifolds down a tunnel, basically. Here's our wheel retainers, the dashboard, the front suspension with the lower A arms and our steering linkage and anti-sway bar all in there. Our engine and transmission, this is the manual transmission. Then we have our firewall or sorry, our radiator support, the little X is molded in there, which is prototypical to add some strength to the sheet metal. There's the top of our rear axle with those little uh, bars in there. Then here we have our uh, cylinder heads and our fan shroud and a little spot for our radiator hose to go into. There's our front water cover and that Oh, that's that heater motor thing. And then here we have our stock hood with a little vent that opens up. It also has the hood pins. So the detail on here is pretty good, I'd say. If you turn this upside down, you can see you've got a couple of sink marks and mold marks in here that you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. In fact, this one's fairly deep, so good luck with that, James, when you get around to it. You can always get some putty at Monster Hobbies. <laughs> okay, moving this off to the side. I have some Tamiya spot putty. Uh, there's our dashboard and you can see the nice detail in it. Looks like a 70 Chevelle for sure. And that would be our first amount of our parts tree. Let's take a look at some more. Next up we have our little back brace that goes under that bumper. There's our custom mirrors. Not sure what this is. <laughs> there's our fan with the clutch. Clutch cargo. Anyway, there's our wheel backs, our interior bucket, and this one does have the clutch, the brake, uh, yeah, the clutch, the brake, and the gas pedal. There's our exhaust manifolds, our chassis, and our bucket seats front and back. There's that intake manifold. It's quite a big high-rise intake manifold, our steering column and steering wheel, and the belts and alternator. So let's just move our interior off for a minute. Turning this over, you can see all the nice detail work on that chassis. Very cool. Big fuel cells back in the day. All the bracing in here, everything. Really excellent looking. On the back, a little bit of uh, Oh, well, those go into holes in the engine block. I was going to say sand them off, but don't bother. <laughs> okay, there's our manifold. It's also got the distributor molded in place, so you could drill a hole right through this and then put in engine wires if you're into that. The back of the seats are nice. They even have the little uh, emblem there molded in place. So very nice work. Let's take a look at our interior tub here. Good effort, even though you're still having to go down the sides with the mold process. Some nice detail on the back seats. Console is nice. There are, of course, four mold marks in the corner. Again, another sink in there. So, James, you gotta fill that. Scrape it down with your number 16 hobby blade. Lots of flash on the back of the wheels. But overall, quite nice. There's the clutch on the fan there. 
So very cool, very cool indeed. And there's still one more White's Parts Tree. And this, of course, is our Street Performance Competition Parts Tree. And as you can see, you get this nice Chevelle hood with the cutout for our blower assembly. It's even notched for the belt part and then the wider blower. There's our wheel backs, the deep dish ones. There's our intake manifold that's flat on the top for that blower to go on. These parts are stock here and custom. That, of course, is for your rear axle, your spring mounts. And then there's our roll bar, as well as a fire extinguisher. <laughs> okay, anyway. Looking underneath again, you're confronted with those mold marks in each of the four corners. At least it's consistent. There are mold marks on the back here of our roll cage. This you could probably get away with not filling because you can butt that right up against the back seat. However, up top, you will have to do a bit of work there. But overall, pretty decent. I must say I'm treated to a special treat with this model kit. Two complete chrome parts trees. Excellent stuff. Don't usually get this much chrome in the 70s style model kits. However, we do have a lot of hot rod pieces and everything else, so rock on. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll just move one of these out of the way and we'll start with the stock components first. Here we have our almost completely stock parts tree for our chrome. Of course, our blower scoop is sitting up here with a little air cleaner right in the very front, which is pretty cool. It doesn't have the uh, opening flaps, but still quite nice. This, of course, would be more for the street version, I do believe. We've got a little shifter here, our stock side mirror carburetor, rear view mirror, this is also for the uh, blower. There's our little alternator. The front and rear bumper. And of course, you're going to have to paint inside here with some red paint and some yellow for your side mark or front <laughs> marker lights here, turn signals. Okay, there's our GM wheels and our air cleaner, the little bits for our front headlamps. And, of course, we have our valve covers right here. So let's bring this up to the camera just to see some of that nice detail. You can see the great grill in there with the SS right dead center. SS on the back here of the bumper. So stock Chevelle, of course, would not have the SS in there. I think the grill is a bit different. It's not just a simple removal of the SS. Turning this over, of course, we are confronted with mold marks. So. You need your number 16 hobby blade to take that off. There's our license plates. Again, sand the backs off and put your plate on there. But again, nice chrome work from Ravel. And now moving on to the fully drag race street custom chrome tree. You get, of course, these nice mag wheels. They're actually duplicated for the dragster version. Here you get your side exhaust pipes for those lake pipes. There's our big GM blower. I think it's 6-71, is that correct? And there's the drives and everything, our dual carburetors, and our chrome pulleys here, which of course you'll have to paint that black on the belts. But take a look at this nice detail here on those wheels. These are very uh, 1980s style wheels, performance wheels. But anyway, at least I remember them from the 80s. Maybe they're a little earlier. You guys could let me know in the comments down below. On the back, pretty decent for mold marks. In fact, I don't really see any. Just looking at this, that would be much of a problem. But again, very nicely done from Ravel. Next up, we have our windshield. And this is sort of connected like the old 60s style. You do get the side glass on the back windows here, as well as our rear window. And here's all our little headlights, which of course you have to clip out there and there. But as you can see, being in the bag, there's no scratches along here. There are a few mold marks up in here, which of course, number 16 hobby blade. I just kind of knock them down a bit, you know, so that they're sort of not a pain. However, these will glue in on the top in the roof, so you won't even see them but still very nicely done, and they do fit quite well. And here we have our tires for our 1970 Chevelle, and I've actually made an interesting discovery, and I'll tell you about that in a minute here. So what we have on this Spider is, of course, our stock 
rubber tires. And as you can see, there is a nice little tread pattern on here. These tires are representative of 80s tires. They're not the old 60s style. Uh, these are radial tires, but the interesting part is it doesn't have any name on here, like Goodyear, Firestone, whatever. So they're very generic, but I'll get to a little thing I f discovered in a minute here. Here we have the two drag slicks for our dragster erase machine. And as you can see, they are pretty slick across the back. Again, there is no name on here. So generic drag slicks. And then right here, I did figure it out. These are bigger tires for the street machine version because they would have uh, tires with treads on them. These ones match the the stock tires, although they are larger, of course, bigger treads and everything. So James didn't throw these in as an extra. They are actually kit tires. Again, no name. Now, the interesting part about this is there must have been a fallout with Ravel and Goodyear because this is an original tire from the Chevelle kit, or the typical generic uh, tire at the time. This one went through the High River Flood, that's why it looks muddy. It's actually kind of nice if you want to use this in a mud diorama. Anyway, these are Goodyear tires, and they are the GT Radial, which came out in the later end of the 70s, mid-70s, like 76 or 78, somewhere in there. 70s, more late 70s, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. But, you know, quite interesting that that is our history. That somewhere in the process, Goodyear, they couldn't pay the sponsorship or something, or uh, couldn't play, pay the, uh, what do you call it, licensing. So, got ground out of the mold. Anyway, this is kind of good in a way because it allows you to paint a white wall on here with your tire spinner. And finally, we have our nice decal sheet with the heavy Chevy for the rear quarter panels. Then we've got our nice white stripes on there, as well as SS-454, this sort of rainbow effect uh, hood decal for the street machine. It's even got the little notch where the blower will be popping through. And then for our drag racer, we have all the sponsors, Valvoline, Moog, uh, TRW, 104, Crane Cams, Ram, Monroe Shocks, Bondo, <laughs> use a lot of Bondo in your Chevy, and then uh, Mr. Gasket, I believe. So that's what we have there for our decals. Here's my build of the Revell 1970 Chevelle 3-in-1, and I chose to build mine in stock formation. And as you can see, I added in a white vinyl top that was done with uh, wide masking tape and a hobby knife. Added in a little bare metal foil around the posts as well. You can see the nice fit and finish of this kit. And the stripes on the hood are actually hand painted on there. I couldn't get the decal to conform to that front hood bulge with all its weirdness. So I just did it freehand with, well, not freehand, but with some masking tape. And that completes our look at the Ravel Street Burner 1970 Chevelle 3-in-1 kit. And if you've built this kit in the past, why not share your pictures on our Facebook page? Link in the description below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that review, and I wish you all the best of luck in finding your own copy of the 1970 Chevy Chevelle 3-in-1 Street Burner. And I'd like to thank my good friend James for loaning this model to us so that we could open it up and take a look and see what's in the box. So next time, tune in as we've got another great video coming up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and visit us on our Patreon page. And until then, everybody, happy model building!